Good man. Yes, sir. This man trying to start us off with no sound. Oh shit, man. Technical difficulties, man. I've pardon been, me, pardon me. I've been hot since last night, though. It'll, it'll, hell yeah. That shit <laughs> last a long time, bro. Last a long time. Oh uh, shit, I, it's been a long time since I had one in there. You tried, to, you tried to time it with the future drop, the future metro drop. I, I tried to do something, but obviously it ain't work. They still are. <laughs> Yo, welcome back. Episode 46, man. Full in the, uh, back in full effect. Back in full effect, man. Where you want to start off, man? Um, where you want to start off, though? It's a rainy Friday, but we got some music out. We do have lots. Several mm-hmm. albums dropped. Several. Several albums? Yeah. Mm. Yeah, we got my boy, Sir. Shout out to TDE. Yep. Been looking forward to that, that for a long time. Episode. We got Tyler. Finally, with her debut project, Self Titled. Tyler. And I listened to it. Amazing. It is? Yes, it's Afro Beats, but she's singing in English. And you know Afro Beats been popping for a little while now, so it's, we, we got somebody that's actually giving us words we can understand. She got Tim's on there. Charles yeah. Tim's? She got a Gunner feature on there. Mm. She got a Travis Scott feature. Mm. And she got a, you know what I'm saying, for the Latino, she got Becky G. Okay. Yeah. Hey, man, she don't give a fuck about American beef, man. Y'all shout out to Gunner, though. <laughs> Nigga don't give a fuck nah, about that. Nah, shout out to Tyler. And we got the main one, the big one. Oh, mm-hmm. uh, yeah. Um, future. Future. Hendrix. Not only Future, Metro Boomin. Yeah. Metro we, Boomin. We'll talk about that after. Yes. Um, this is the first of two. A two-pack. It is. The next one going to come out next week. Yes. Woo. Yes, it is. We Don't Trust You. Mm-hmm. Which is perfectly titled, because y'all know the tag. Well, one of Metro Boomin's two tags is... If you don't let you, don't trust you. I'm going to shoot you. you. We know the other one is for the guy behind bars right now. Yeah, Metro, yeah, Metro. Metro. Free thug. But let's oh, get into oh, it. Well, I don't want to get into that yet. All right, okay, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Um, I've noticed you, we had some other singles that came out. Did we? Yeah. Um, Somebody who's been on hiatus for a while. Big Sean. Oh, he been on hiatus? Or he missing whatever you want to call it. Retired. I, I don't know he what was he done. was doing. Yeah, I thought he was on. I, I don't know what he was doing, but okay. he made, made music in a while. He he okay. dropped a song. He did uh, precision. Um, I listened to that little. I didn't listen to that song. I listened to that little freestyle shit that he posted. <laughs> that right, clip. Yeah, I did see that. I saw that. Okay. Trash. Thoughts. Trash. Oh, you going there? Yeah, trash. I might want to hear from Big Sean right now, bro. I think I mean I think it's been over been, I mean listen I'll put it like this um it was a uh, it was a, a very infamous drink champs interview that came out what a couple years ago mm-hmm. Kanye West mm-hmm. well formerly known as Kanye West now known as Jay okay uh where he randomly said Big Sean was the worst mistake he ever you made, made. <laughs> his career <laughs> man like a, a fake a tombstone whatever it was put his name on it it was over with for him first of all that's crazy it is it is Big Sean was actually like. Decently successful. Listen, man, I know, I know it's popular. That's the thing, too. That's, the thing. you know, we talk about all the greats, the two pods, the biggies, and and all that. But the yeah. thing is, you never get got to see what they would turn out to be if they had more time, right, on the earth, right. That's the fucked up thing about like being a music legend. We don't look at Ti the same way we used to look at him when he was making. 20 foes and all that selling right. 500,000 first week and all that you're right we don't look at G's the same way at he all. was running BMF and all that mm-hmm. Big Sean had a wave he, he did he forgot. did he did he had a wave that whole snapback and every listen, wave listen he was one of the better dressed mm-hmm. he was one of the better rappers as far he as was. lyrically freestyles the entendres the metaphors the similes the flow he was. He was. He was getting some of the biggest features and featured on some of the biggest songs: the Jay Z's, the Kanye's, the Drakes, the Lil Wayne's, the Nicky's, the Nicky's, the Chris Browns. Yeah. Um, multiple hits. Yeah. I think Kanye might have been right though, man. You think so? I think he 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 might have been corny the whole time. It might have just been an error. It might have been, been just a corny it error. error. <laughs> it probably was. It was more fun music. It was. To be it fair. was. It was. That was. That I mean, was he made, for that. Bro, yeah. he made it. Ass, 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 ass. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> that In hindsight, like, he might look a little different. You, know you go back to that song right now. That shit is terrible. Hey, check this out. The flow is the flow is trash too. Big Sean has been putting out some of the worst music 
that you could possibly ask somebody that has that history to put out and his his his, his, his ability too. The bars <laughs> are a bunch of nothing. Nothing. He tries to get introspective with we'll talking about his life and he meditating. He's in. I promise you, this is not the time or place for that. And we don't even fuck about we that. We do not from care you, about none of that. You know what I'm saying? Janae Aiko, she sucked all the powers out of you. You know what I'm saying? Like Space Jam. Literally. She went and became a, a mother for the uh, for the second child, and she backed off. Y'all just do y'all thing together, man. If, if 2088 Part Two ain't coming out, we honestly don't care nothing about what Big Sean talking about. But hold on. With that being said, did you listen to his song? I did. Precision was not good. It wasn't precise. It was. <laughs> It was a lot of ad living. It was a lot of pew pew pew. He did a lot of that. Is he still boy? I didn't hear that. I didn't. I did not hear boy. Um, okay. All right. I did not hear that. Uh, Damn. But yeah, I mean, it's it's old with man. I, I, I'm sorry, and I, and I ain't trying to shit on you. Know what I'm saying because Wiz Khalifa was popping at one time too. We don't give a fuck what Wiz Khalifa dropped. We don't care what title. It's a lot of them YGs. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> the Wale. It's a lot of folks that was making great music around that era. Cause I went back and listened. Yeah. And it's over with. And it's cool. It's cool. Everybody not gonna have the Jay Z and the Nas careers and all that. You yeah, know what I'm saying? It, right. it don't work like that. It's I mean, cool. everybody ain't gonna have the, the Kendrick Cole and yeah, Drake. There you go. So there you go. Uh, I mean, hold on. Also, another new music because I mean, we've been talking about it for a while. She still ain't dropped my album yet, but Cardi B dropped Cardi a new B song. Did drop a new yeah, song? Yeah, enough. Enough. She did. Also, she dropped a single with Shakira. Shakira. Oh, okay. Um. And so she tapped into both markets, you know what I'm saying? The, the, the Hispanic, the Latino, and yeah. her, uh, uh-huh. her pop, American pop. Like, yeah, so I mean, did you did you hear the song? I did. I did hear the song. Um, Would you, any thoughts about that? Well, before I get to that, she also made a video saying uh, she was very appreciative of all the support she got. Um, the song is doing well, and she called it her comeback to music, okay. which I thought was interesting. Mm-hmm. But that was very interesting because that makes it sound like we're never getting another album from Cardi B, and she is terrified to drop a project. If you call you it a single, time. Cardi B has been, has been dropping singles for like six, seven years. She has. How is that considered a comeback? She has. She has. She's been dropping a lot of singles. How is that considered? You just dropped a freestyle like the week prior. So what are you talking about? I don't know what she's talking about. I did listen to the song. Cardi B sounds like Cardi B sounds. You know what I'm saying it's that that wave is over with, man. That all these all. You, Cardi B has this thing where she hates Nicki Minaj and they beefing, but she took a lot of the things that Nicki Minaj do in terms of all she does is start every song and every verse with none of you bitches can fuck with me. I'm better than all y'all at this, this, and that's what the whole verse is about. Yeah. It's over with, man. We don't care about that. Make a song. Make a good song. What's one of your biggest songs? I like it. Like, you know what I'm saying? The, yeah. the Bruno Mark. Do that rap, bro. We don't care about none of that. You're not the greatest rapper in the world. No, they want more bull that kills. Stop. It's over for that. That like that was, that was an error for that bullshit too. That was that was the uh, the, the uh, Ray Shrimmer, the Sway Lees, and then all that. You know what I'm saying? But it's over for that. I didn't like the song. It's over with, man. Rap about yourself. Give us something. You give us what you think about being absent. From the album game for so long, give us something to latch on to. Don't just keep going on with these one bitch, two bitch, three. That's enough, bro. <laughs> That's enough. Bro. Bitch, you bitch. Talking about bitches, it, you dealing with ops and shit still. Cardi, but nobody's worried about you and your musical input. People want an album. Nobody's trying to sabotage your career. You're not dropping no music. It's one girl that's been challenging everybody to say something to her, and y'all ain't doing nothing. Mm. And she on tour right now. Doing a damn thing. She is. She just did two nights in Atlanta too. She just did two nights back to back in Atlanta, but that's what I'm I heard the track. Sound like Cardi. I was I was happy to hear music from her, but then you know you put it back and see all the singles that she dropped. I was like, oh shit. But for me with Cardi, once one song, you play the song once or twice, I don't feel I don't ever hear that shit again. Mm. So, you know, it's whatever to me. I mean, this is probably her biggest next big song after WAP, right? Um, she oh well, she dropped. So let's just go through it. She dropped enough. She dropped eight versions of it, whatever, man. Enough Miami earlier this year. She dropped like what the freestyle. She was out the window. Last year she dropped the big single that's supposed to be Megan's comeback with um bongos. That shit was poo. She dropped the single with Offset Jealousy. She hopped on the remix with your New York 
girl, I don't know her name. What is who? Fendi the rapper. Point me to the sluts. Oh no, 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 that's not New York. That's from Chicago. Okay, Chicago. My bad. She drops the shit with Glorilla. The Tomorrow Suit Freestyle. Yeah, the hot shit with Kanye West. You have several singles over the over the course of the last few years. Oh, so that's how she been known. Oh, and she got the the verse with uh, uh what's her name, Lotto. So it's, yep. it's it's I mean it's not like she disappeared. I don't know what she means by comeback. Maybe come back to albums. She don't want to be a feature rapper anymore. Okay. Mm-hmm. Well, let's get. Well, I don't think that's all the music that I remember that I thought about. Yeah. Um, you know, suppose you know. Oh my bad. And she just uh did the remix with Flo Millie. Uh, never gonna lose me. I uh, never okay. lose me. Yeah. Um, you know, Yay Two Vultures Two is supposed to be dropping. Yes, it is. I'm very excited. You've been doing snippets of it at concerts. And I heard it's much, even much better than the first one with that been, that's been dominating the charts. So I can't wait Still. for that. So, um, but let's talk about it, man. Future Metro booming. We don't trust you. Matter of fact, the video just dropped from one of the singles off this album. It sure did. The one with uh, Travis Scott and Cardi. And Cardi. Shout out yes. to Cardi because Cardi's been on a, a bit of a tear lately, too. He's been on all the albums. <sighs> Can I ask you a question as we speak about that? Go ahead, go ahead. When you say he's been on a tear, yeah. when you when people are on a tear, does it mean that it's it has to be good or they're just showing up? I mean, put it like this. It was a time when you could not drop an album and promote your music without having a little baby feature. Okay. The next thing was moving on to Ghana. Not, not Ghana's part me. A little dirt. Mm-hmm. And now clearly the, the wave is having Carter. Travis Scott. Yeah. Well, it was Cardi B, Travis Scott, and now you got Playboy Cardi. So clearly it means that these people are looked at in the industry as this is where the energy is. This is who got the, the ears of the kids. Yeah. Okay. I need I need a verse from this person. All right. I can see that. So that's what I mean by been on the tear. Like, you've been popping up on the, some of the biggest album releases. Yeah, you have. You have. I'm I mean, he just, so. he's technically on the number one song right now. Facts. So, okay. Um, Facts. But are you a fan of Cardi? Yeah, I like Cardi. Playboy Cardi. I like yeah, Cardi. Playboy Cardi. You are? Okay. Yeah, I think he's a, a big part of what music should be looking to as far as you got to keep evolving, bro. You can't keep doing the same thing. Cardi. You feel like he's evolving? Have you heard his voice? Yeah, that should be. He says a bunch of nothing. I'm asking you a question. Yes, I have heard his voice. Have you heard him rap before this? Yeah. So does that sound the same to you? No, but I doubt it. to me, that's not evolving. He hasn't done anything to make himself better. I didn't say nothing about better. You said better. I said Is evolving, evolving not getting better? No, evolving means changing. Okay. Evolution can be for the better or the worse. You're right. We went from no technology to a lot of technology. I that, mean, shit, that shit kind of sad right now. That's what I'm saying. But whose perspective is that's better or worse? That's yeah, you're what right. I'm saying. Okay, fair enough. He went from like this young, cool, flashy, regular rapper dude to like the baby voice Cardi. Now he got this deep voice. That's called evolution. Keep yes to yeah, That's a future sounding voice who he's doing. Just saying, it's a lot of rappers. Fabulous still rapping the same way he did when he came out, yeah. and that's not a shot. I'm just saying, it's a lot of rappers that that yeah. take the lazy route. No, no, I don't think try I to think, change nothing. No, no, what he did was sticking his bag and he doing it well. Hold on, do you say the goat was Jay Z, right? Mm-hmm. That nigga was rapping fast as hell when he first dropped with Hawaiian shirts, right? He rapped slow as shit. <laughs> he do poetry now, so I'm saying is, you think that's better? That's evolutional, right? <laughs> <laughs> I hate that. That's all I'm saying. Travis Scott still doing the same shit. Yeah, he's, enough, enough for him. Yeah, I'm about to say he's, he's, he's been doing the same shit enough for since. But um, so you 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 listen to the album? I did, I did. I got a chance to listen to it. Um, shout out Metro Boom and shout out Future. Yeah, and he got a lot of uh, hidden features on there. He does, he does. The Weekend is one of them. The Weekend did uh, do some background yeah, work. Shout out to him. He been rocking with uh, Metro and uh, Future, Future for, for a while. A long yeah. Time. So um. Yeah, we got we got that. We got the feature of Travis Scott and Playboy Cardi. We got another feature on there. I think I heard. Uh, he had uh yeah we uh Travis Scott. He had uh he had snip- Travis on there twice. He had a snippet from Young Thug. Um, mm-hmm. His voice. What he got a lot there? of. Um, I'm probably missing some else. Oh, well, we'll get to that later. Yeah, but he I mean, had you got he got a lot feature of, of all features. He got an interesting a lot of talking and like openings from with some that prodigy. Is it Prodigy? I think so. It's okay, it's definitely in New York. I can tell. Yeah, I but... think that's Prodigy. Okay. Um, I, I can see that happening because, you know, one of the closer to the end, one of the songs he did, um, what's it called? Like, Quiet Storm. Yes. Met- you know what? I want to yeah, say that right. about Metro, right? Yeah, rap over the little Kim. Yeah. 
I will say that about Metro. You hear a lot of people, like a lot of producers, sample songs and whatnot. Mm-hmm. I feel like Metro is one of the better people at sampling or flipping a song. In comparison to what all time or just yeah, just like in general, from at least like as of late, what I've been hearing. Because I mean, I've, I've definitely heard Khaled do that, and whoever his producers are, I've heard a few people. But like the last few flips that I've heard from Metro, I actually like. Because sometimes you can you can hear a flip from a song and it's like, uh, you kind of ruin the song. I mean, I think it's yeah. I think it's I think he does a great job, man. I mean, he's an all time. He's a great producer, just yeah. in general, all time. I think he about to set the record if this album goes number one for it. Uh, producer with the most, most number one albums. Yeah, he is. I believe. I mean, he got a chance between this week and next week. Yeah. He's about to have two back back albums, so. Uh, but yeah, definitely Metro's talented. But yeah, he uh, definitely tapped in and uh, he definitely makes a, con- he has a vision for what he wants a project to sound, sound like, which yeah. I think is great. I just think some of the beats could have been used on people that are more capable on bringing it to life in terms of lyric. Okay. But he's, I mean, the, the Offset, 21, Futures, these are not the lyrical rappers. They Very just, true. You know Very true. Yeah. So, so hopefully, I, we get to see him with somebody a little bit more lyrical in, in the near future. Because I would love to hear the Quiet Storm flip with something like a Benny. That would have been crazy. Yeah, that would have been, been crazy. That's crazy. Where I that's what I, who I would have heard it for. Him. Or at least give us a feature from one of them. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Give us the West Side Gun where you got the non lyrical mix with the, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I, I definitely agree with you. So, I definitely agree with you. I do that. Better. I would like to see, I would like to, I mean, we can get into it in a second, but. Uh, a Cole and Kendrick on those uh, Metro beat. Yeah, I would like it because the rappers who can you know, especially like a Kendrick who can change his flow and do all of that and kind of you know his cadence and he can really he can hone in on something different. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, I mean, bro, most talked about song right now. You want to get to that now? We want to. Oh, we want to. You want to finish reviewing the album? Oh, okay. Go we can, so I'm, I'm gonna go into because my little the, quick. Clearly, the timeline I've been saying that's two separate discussions. They talking about a future album. It's down here. Literally, First, it's up here. Literally, um, I listened to the album. Okay. I'm not, I'm not sold yet. I listened to it one time, full, fully through. Okay. And then, then I started kind of hearing a song, hearing a song, and I'm like, all right. Yeah. Um, it didn't really, as anticipated as this was. It's like, all right, it, it fell short. It fell pretty flat. Okay. Um, Future does sound pretty much the same across the board. It does. Um, I'm, I do hear Future Future has in the past, you know, changed his flow up a little bit. I've heard more use of the auto-tune. I, want, I thought I was going to hear more of that. Well, um, they did say this is more of the rap, and the next one would be R&B, Future Hendrix. So, like, so his, like how he did have the before. Future and Hendrix joint? Yeah. Okay. Correct. Um, fair enough, but I didn't see... Right, I didn't see no no evolving in this joint at all. That joint was Correct. like real flat across the board. It was, and um, it not. started to make almost like like you said with the production behind it, it started to fall really flat because Future Voice didn't change and it didn't Correct, increase yeah. the production at all, and so they didn't help each other. It was just there. Yeah. So. Um, and that's I think that's a. Uh, I think that's uh, I agree with you. First of all, I think that's one of the. Um, faults that may keep people from looking at Metro booming in a certain light mm-hmm. when it comes to production because he's given great beats and a vision but you have to pick the perfect marriage with the artist that's made to elevate that like when you mm-hmm. think about Dr. Dre mm-hmm. the stuff he was giving Snoop Dogg and the Easy es and the Ice Cubes and the Tupacs those artists were meant for those beats Yeah, you got Future rapping over Quiet Storm he, what is he gonna say? Uh, literally. What is he well, gonna he, yeah, say? Yeah. You, I mean, that you could. I could have called Zaytoven. I could have called Southside. I could have called thirty different producers. That's gonna get that same song from Future. From Future. You I cannot agree. give a person with that limited ability of rapping one of those one of those beat flips. Yeah. So I, I mean, that's something I think Metro just got to take a look at. I but agree. he's taking risks as much as he can. Enough for the Travis Scott and Metro booming beats, bro. Travis Scott has nothing. He just makes a lot of fucking noise. He does, and that's all I hear from that. He does. I, 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 I can't stand. I don't want to hear that. That's when the beat kind of dies down. You hear the whatever the pianos maybe in the background, and you yeah. hear Travis. Ooh, I don't want to hear that shit no more. Yeah, I honestly don't want to hear Travis anymore. If it's not just the production part, I don't want to hear Travis. I agree. I think uh, his. I honestly think his era is kind of dying a little bit too. I think just the the it's a lot of these dudes that's just leaning on auto tune and mm-hmm. cool shit mm-hmm. and a good beat. That's that's watering music down because everything that's vibing 
it's short lived. Very much so. And vibes ain't last, and that's just a trendy song. Mm -hmm. But I'll keep it moving. Um, so that's why I said I agree with you. I think the album, the beat selection, a lot of these were very chill, like good sounding beats, yeah. and it threw me off because that's not what people go after a future album for. Nah, were, especially if he's not singing on it. Nothing uplift me. Nothing about yeah, this hype. This I, I didn't hear yeah. none of these like hard. Like I expected. Like you said, it's the rap side. I I want to hear something that's gonna be in the club. Some some strip clubs. Yeah, shit. yeah. But I, I didn't. Mean, get, I don't think I got any of that. I got one. I, got, I Magic Done One was fire. That's a okay. strip club song. You know what I'm saying? I did love the uh, tribute to Thug, Where My Twin At. Yeah. Which is more of like a jingle, which is kind of funny. Because <laughs> the nigga was just like, It was. It was a jingle. But um, he had some... He, it's not like it's a bad album. It's just... I don't know, man. I, it's in that, in that realm of how, like, for instance, right? You look at... And I think Future... Because even, like, what was the last year that he put out that album? Uh, two years ago. Uh, two years ago. Yeah. Good album. I never liked you. But with the like, remember like first like Drake would put out not even kind of style like Certified Lover Boy, right? Yeah. It would be like Drake, really? Like, no, it's not a bad album, but we done heard the same exact shit. It falls flat across the board. Yeah. Like, yeah, it's not terrible. We get that. You're not putting out any. Y'all yeah, not putting out bad albums, but right. It's like, yeah. where's any progression? Where's something that's going to give us like a little bit more? Right. You got something that's highly anticipated. You got one of the best producers. Give us something more. And again, like you said, the beats are chill. Like you, that was it. Turned into background music in the car for me just now. I agree. <clears throat> I agree. I was like trying to listen in the gym. I'm like, <laughs> no motivation. <laughs> yeah, it just it just wasn't hitting, and I was expecting some hard hitting. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it just. I mean, it, I'm, I'll run a couple of these back, but um. For me, first listen, it'll be maybe a 7 out of 10. I mean, it's nothing memorable. The, the replay value isn't really there for me. I, I'm not, I don't think I'm going to add this to my to my library. But, I mean, <clears throat> but we do got one highlight. We do. When I say a highlight, what I mean is it damn near overshadowed the whole project. And it probably is right now. We're going to get to that in a second. We got the highlight, man. Let's get to it, man. We're going to say the best for last. <sighs> Fucking Kendrick Lamar. Kendrick Lamar, not only Kendrick Lamar, Lil Wayne, Three Six Mafia, mm -hmm. nostalgia, energy, everything you want, man. So if you go back to who was that, two thousand and seven, maybe six? That's a good question. I, 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 my my years when it come to Wayne is crazy because yeah, he's dropping he, so much, so much, yeah, in a short amount of time. But if y'all are around for mixtape yes. Wayne, you know the dedications, the droughts. Um, that beat is very, very familiar with you. Off the drop three, I believe it's I Can't Feel My Face for one of them. Um, yeah, one of Wayne's harder freestyles on that, to me personally. Um, Metro decides to. Damn, a freestyle. That's one of his best just releases. Yeah, 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 yeah. That, that shit was, yeah. is um, phenomenal. And so Metro, Metro took that beat and allowed Future to get on it. And with that being said, Cool, hard body motherfucker I'm got the heart of a religion. killer. Young squad in the bin. About to call him religion. Come about on, man. Bin Laden, all all the order some missiles. missiles. Bring them straight, straight to your block and go to war with you bitches. bitches. Come on, man. Listen, you don't. We don't got that type of. That's what I'm saying. We. we I was allowed to see that version of Wayne. And that was that was a ridiculous. We would never man. see nothing like that again. This you is won't. a different type. Listen, man. Yeah. Go ahead, man. I'm about but to um. I you can't know, feel my face. So shout out Jewels. You take it back a few. Let me take it back real quick. Seventeen years ago. Sheesh. A few months ago. Well, like last year sometime. Or maybe two years ago. Mm -hmm. Drake dropped a joint album with Twenty One Savage, right? Yes. There's a lot of controversy. Well, not controversy, but a lot of like spewings, a little, you know, hearsay about. Hmm. It sounds like it might be some beef brewing between Future and Drake. He said, hey, randomly, why wouldn't Future be on any of these songs? Yeah, that was strange. That, that was, was strange. strange. You know, especially during that time, they had a bunch of music together. Mm -hmm. um, they actually said that album was really supposed to be for Drake and Future, rather than 21. Interesting. You go forward, Drake drops his album. He happened to have a song called What Would Pluto Do? He did. And no Pluto to be found. 
That was strange. Um, if you heard the song, I believe I didn't. I'm not gonna say word for word, but he was talking about you know, should I fuck this girl? What Pluto do? And to put this in context, for like the last, um, because the joint album with Drake and Future came out 2015, I believe. Mm-hmm. So for the last close to 10 years, between Thug, Future, 21, Ghana, Lil Baby. A lot of these when they release projects, you can almost tell by the name of the song who's going to be, be on, on that song. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And that came true with this future album as well. Anything that said Slime, Thug had a voice on or was about yep. Thug. So, go ahead. And so, you know, you get a song like that, what would Future do? I mean, what would Pluto do? Yeah. No, Pluto would be found. You talking about fucking girls on there? Cool. Go forward to this song with... Kendrick and Future, one of Future's second verse, talking about, you know, you a groupie, pretty much told him a groupie, and he be pillow talking. Is that what a he lot said? Of, a lot of people, pretty much. I, I, I didn't say the words that Future said. But, no, I'm pull up a list. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah. Oh, pardon me. This is called Like That. Everybody. Like knows that. My fault. My fault. Future featuring Kendrick Lamar, Like That. Um, yeah, and pretty much there's been a lot of here say that Future and Drake beef in it. Might be over a woman. Might be. And so... Might be. I just want to talk about that because before, you know, we, we got the hardest verse on the, on the album. Correct. We know what Kendrick did, but, right. you know, what do you have any, like, thoughts behind that? Um, A lot of times when they say it's over a woman, it's really not over a woman. It's about disrespect. You know what I'm saying? Very much so. Um, I agree. And I can definitely see a uh, future... I mean, where he's from, you know what I'm saying, what they stand for... Uh, a lot of things is really about like what they call loyalty, however they view it, and uh, territorial things. And I could definitely see he don't he probably didn't like some shit that that Drake did. And Drake being the Canadian he is, <laughs> he don't understand that you being this half white Canadian guy. A lot of these dudes don't take certain things the way you take them, or maybe it was intentional. Maybe Drake did some shit. Yeah, he really didn't care. Well, I mean, so if let's just let's just say it happened to be about a woman, because mo- it is disrespect. You know, a lot of guys, and you know where future come from. You know, and this could be state to state, but they have this saying: "We know who is for who." My girl is my girl. That's she's off limits. No matter if I'm with her now, I'm with her later. My girl is my girl. We could break up for two, 16 years. Don't touch her. We got those for the team. These aren't correct. So, if it happens to be in that vicinity, I can understand future. I mean, I know you got the lyrics there. Yeah, so I'm going to read this. Uh, and the, the whole, like I said, I love how Metro approached it. Um, fake written all over you. Fake written all We can't trust you. That's the whole thing. That's the whole theme of the album. Oh, and if, or if you want to rewind it back, too, there's supposedly a brewing beef between Metro and Drake, too. Correct. So, Correct, and Metro definitely is open about <laughs> who he sides with. You know what I'm saying? He comes off as a, a very loyal guy. Very much. So let me read some lyrics from this verse. Uh, you a nigga number one fan, dog. Sneak dissing. I don't understand, dog. Pillow talking, acting like a fed, dog. And mind you, a lot of people are not going to get this witness because they say future not lyricists. But dog, come on, that's a reference to Far the Dogs. But let's keep it going. Hey, hey. I don't need another freight. I don't need another fake friend, dog. Can't be by the hoe, cause we, cause we sharing. Hmm, see, you in your feelings, nigga. Why you playing? Hmm. Mm. Mm. So could be another way around. Just saying. Just saying. Could be another way around. Somebody said thought it was we were sharing them, and now you, now you and your feelings about that one particular one. That's what I'm saying. So that's what I, said. I, I definitely. <laughs> Feel like Future probably took something that Drake did a little personally, and uh, Drake did what he do try to get petty like it's Kanye. It's not Kanye, bro. <laughs> it's not Kanye. It's not Kanye. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Some of these guys really from that certain background, and I mean, you got to remember, bro. If we looking at Future's background, he had a beef with Rocco, the dude that damn near brought him into the game. Yeah. And made it public. Yeah. He would not stop dissing you, and he will. Get, <laughs> he's associated with street dudes. He's from the street, so. And um, and if and the future is also one of those people that you don't want to play that tit for tat with, because future fuck every girl that you came with. He's too. So, 
Drake, if you're in the feelings about one, it's going to be a long day for you, bro. I mean, in my honest opinion, man, I love it, man. I, I really do hope that it's beef. I mean, because at the end of the day, um, Pusha T basically summed up my feelings about what Drake has been doing in the latter half of his career. Okay. Standing on mor no morals, uh, trying to adapt who you are, uh, depending on who you're around, just no integrity and in nothing that you do. And who, who who are you really? You 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 playing tough one moment, you playing petty. I mean, so it's a lot of different things, and that makes people uncomfortable. And you're not sure. There's just a lot of shit that goes into it. But the point is, I think people see. You see through you. We don't know who you, you see are. See right through you. I mean, listen. You can go back to For All the Dogs on one of the songs. He said, "To be honest, I ain't just I ain't come gangster till recently." That's a, to me. That says a lot. Yeah. That says a, that says a whole lot about somebody. Yeah. I agree. So, um, I mean, I agree, man. I, I hope the beef continues. I actually, like, I like I like the beef. I want to hear more music about the beef. Mm -hmm. uh, but with that being said, let's take a little rewind back for all the dogs. Drake had a song with who? J Cole. J Cole has been on. You talking about a tear? J Cole has been on a tear. Correct. Um, J Cole in one of his verses, he said, you know, they talk about. Who at the top, me, Kendrick, or Drake. And he said right now he feeling like Muhammad Ali. Like he number one. Which was ridiculous, but it was a hard verse. Definitely was a hard verse. I, I, I won't. I think we disagree with you a little bit there, but we're not talking about Cole right now. I'm just saying, go ahead. Yeah. Go ahead. No, no, go ahead. I was going to say what. Well. I'm saying he can feel how he wanted to feel. It's done nothing in his career to be considered the best out of those three. I mean, he, he's been real consistent lately. Like, he's he's well, what? on up. With verses? Versus music, I don't know. Cause so, so Cardi should be the best too, right? Playboy Cardi? No, Cardi B, cause she do a lot of verses too. That no, no, no. But he also, got, I'm, I'm he also dropped the album. When? How long ago was that? The fall. Yeah. But he's had he had more than one album. I'm asking. He has more than one album. I'm asking you a question. Cardi only has one album. I'm just asking. I'm saying his career question. has has been. I'm saying what was the last when he dropped the last album? That's all I want to know. That's all I want to know. Twenty. I'm tell you right now. That's all I want to know. You know what I'm saying? Got it right here. Last album was twenty twenty one. Right, three years ago, right? Yeah. All right, so that's consistent. Mm hmm Okay, cool. You're doing non stop verses too. Similar okay, go ahead. Go ahead. No, 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 Cardi didn't say though. I just said go ahead. Cardi ain't even the caliber of But yeah, so you know you know, Cole said that. He did. He stood on it. And now what most people say it as a Drake this. Mm-hmm. I see it as a both this. To him, I agree. To Kendrick, I mean to J. Cole and Drake. I agree. Kendrick dropped the verse. Um one of the better verses that we've heard this year. I agree. Um and you know, you know well we kinda know what Kendrick does. When Kendrick has a verse that he can kinda get at people, he even if he doesn't have to get at anybody, he gets at someone. When Kendrick does to me, when Kendrick does a random feature, it's that. His first feature with Baby King. Oh, yeah. Filthy. Yeah. Won a Grammy too for that, by the way. So let, that's what that. I'm saying. So now you got this one right here. When he did that control feature, he went at everybody. Correct. By the way, somebody made this. Somebody made this kind of hilarious though. They said that Big Sean picked the worst time to drop <laughs> to drop his song, knowing how Kendrick feels. You don't fuck with you. <laughs> but um, yeah. Go ahead, talk to us about that verse, man. Your, that's your boy. Oh man. I I mean, I, I keep telling everybody, if any of these three members, Drake, J. Cole, and Kendrick, were to be thrown into the all-time GOAT discussion as far as rappers, Kendrick is the most proven and the most credible nominee. Mm. He is the most solidified, the most legit, the most authentic, and the most skilled and battle-tested rapper of all of them. I'm talking about hip hop bodies of work, classic projects, mind you, J. Cole with that. subject matter. J. Cole got that. How many how many classes uh, J Cole got? Please give me. Well, we include the mixtapes, right? How many hip hop albums? Cause I, I said albums. I ain't oh, no, 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 you said classics. Yeah, hip hop albums, right? Okay. What? Yeah. How many? Well, this might. <laughs> <laughs> he got one, man. He got one. He got one. He got one. All right, he got one.
How many kids you got? And, and that's on the fence, but cool, we'll move How on. How many kids you got? I mean, you tell me. You, uh, you just answered the first question for me. Go ahead. How many, how many um, classic albums can you got? Can you got, let me see, Good Kid, Mad City. Uh, that's just classic to me. Which one is a better album? Which one would be considered more universally cl uh, classic before the Kendrick, between the Kendrick and the J. Cole project? Um, J. Cole. Since we in headline, let's keep it moving. <laughs> let's keep it moving. <laughs> now we getting into it. Let's I keep it moving. Ahead, man. Like I said, man, he's the most battle tested. He's the most proven um, one when it comes to lyrics. He's the one that's the most direct. The one that's the most direct when it comes to addressing the big three. J. Cole ain't never got direct with none of them niggas. He never been like that. When Drake get direct, he get cooked. Flame broiled. Still ain't respond to Pushy T after he got exposed. But that's neither here nor there. It's, 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 still, it's neither here nor there. I'm not going to Cool. So that's all I'm saying. When you want to talk about the big three amongst those... The ones who albums get critically acclaimed every time, the one that's the rapper of the year every time he dropped, the ones that wins the best rapper out of the album of the year every time he dropped, the one that everybody stops to break down the lyrics of every time he dropped. We talking about Kendrick Lamar. We talking about Kendrick fucking Lamar. The one that ain't never had to write a song called I Let Nas Down. Oh my God. I, I, I wrote a pop song and now Nas is disappointed. The one that ain't never got exposed for wearing blackface. That's what we talking about. The one that's talking about he the best rapper because he doing guest verses but ain't dropping no album. He ain't dropping no album either. Can't you just drop? When he dropped? What was that? 2023. 2022. Pardon me. Was it? It might have been last year. 2022. Okay. Can't you just drop? He dropped. He, he, not only he just dropped right after he dropped that code. It ain't just dropped. That's, that's, that's just dropped to you? That was a year ago, bro. 2022? Yes. It's the beginning of 2024. It's almost halfway through 2024. It's March. It's about a year and a half. It's March. Yeah, year and a quarter. All right, we're going to keep it moving. Like I said, not only that, he's the only one that in the last two to three years has had two full-length verses calling these niggas out directly, and none of them niggas said nothing. Fact check that. What other verse you talking about? We talking about Baby King after he made his return after years and set the whole rap game on fire. He, ain't he dressed. He didn't direct nobody. He this called the nigga number two in the verse, bro. He literally said number two. Oh, you talking about? You talking about who? Who you talking about? Number two DM my bitch. That's what he said. That's what he said. Smoking on your top five, burn your hard drive. Are we? Are we? Is that not direct? I'm asking. It's, it's not direct. Say a name. So the big three, but if I say the uh, no, 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 this one right here, he very, he, he was directing this. He ain't say no names in this. He ain't have to. That's my point. When he say he never <laughs> said, he said the name of the song. So you contradict me? No, I'm talking about before. that first one. He just said he was the goat. You know what I'm saying? Baby King said he's number two cold with my bitch. Hold on. That was part of that was part of Kendrick's verse, right? No, that was Baby King. That was that not part of Kendrick's verse? Is what I'm asking. I don't think so. You cannot think so. I'm telling you what it was. Okay. So let's, let's keep it right. moving. That's the only one that can be considered an all-time great rapper on that list. Niggas talking. Niggas got ghost writing accusations. Yeah, as a rapper, you can't have that, man. Niggas got boring album accusations. <laughs> no, no, hold on, time out, time out. I said, I'm, 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 I'm asking you a question. Time time on. On. That ain't got nothing to do because Nas got that too. We talking about Nas. We talking about the big three. That's all I'm. I, no, honey, you talking about the greatest rapper. You said rapper. Now, I'm of the big three, no, which one of them but, has the but, best argument on, to be considered an all-time great rapper? Hold on, but I'm saying the born rap, born rap album accusation ain't got nothing to do with that. <laughs> that ain't that. Did Nas come out with the when Nas came into uh, his uh, rap career? Was they calling him born? No. When J. Cole came out, was they calling him boring? Yeah, they say sound too much like Okay, Nas. cool. So let's do this. So let's move forward. They say forward sound like Nas. Okay, cool. 
This, I, I, different time. Different time. Like I said, let's move it's a different forward. Different time, man. One of the niggas had the boring rap allegations, and one of the niggas dropped one of the greatest rap albums in the world when they came out in the crib. Yo, so let's move hey, on. Y'all ever let's seen like on. a live podcast where everybody just this, yeah, this fucking this, this old MacBook? Shit, this this motherfucker's a brick. Talking up because when Good Kid Man see what they, they was calling Kendrick Bourne? A little bit. The nigga that had six hits on the on the, on that album. That's what you talking about. What that mean? That I'm asking you a question. Nigga say them hits is born. So hits is born sometimes. We gonna keep them more. Like I said, the best <laughs> argument niggas got black that ain't, face. No, you ain't said nothing ghost, about this goddamn verse got yet. Ghost, ghost writing allegations, which is crazy. That is. We crazy. got born rap. We got first of all niggas biracial, so we gonna say, you know what I'm saying. We gonna stop it right there. You got white moms on. No disrespect to white mom, but cool. I'm just saying. At least I'm, one I'm of them more in tune with their black side. <laughs> At least one of them was more in tune. Cool. Now let's get to the verse, man. Damn, you done did all of that and not talk about these verses? Scratch that, because he also did a cypher. <laughs> oh, also, shit. He, I forgot Kendrick also did a cypher where he cooked Drake ass too and Drake... Listen, man, whatever. Call him the rap in with y'all. Yeah, listen, man. Let me get to the verse, man. Let me read this shit. About fucking time, man. Get to the verse. Yeah, man. not only that, bro. Oh, my fucking God. Talk about the verse. Oh, my fuck. Okay. This is on a rap beat that the last time we heard this, a nigga was straight rapping on with a constant flow. Ain't no breaks, ain't no pauses, straight rapping. That's the last time we heard this. That was Wayne, right? You're right. Kendrick should have had this shit by itself. They should just, Future should just got on there and say, <laughs> Young Metro. Yes. <laughs> like Kendrick Cook. First of all, the nigga come out the gate. These niggas talking out their necks. Don't pull a coffin out your fucking mouth. You said another word, you're dead. <laughs> I'm way too paranoid for a threat. You know what I mean? That's the same shit Pusha T was talking about. You niggas start. I'm not yay. When y'all start yeah, yeah, doing stop, these, yeah, stop doing this little, when y'all stop start doing, doing these, shit. y'all oh I'm the M saying I'm him. Y'all nigga, y'all better not say this. Y'all better not drop. You can't talk to somebody that takes yeah. that type of shit serious. Yeah. If if Terrence Crawford walking down the street, and I said nigga, you better not shove me. This nigga's gonna knock me the fuck out <laughs> for even saying something. He don't take that shit lightly. Let's keep it moving. Niggas, niggas who that's like you know the nigga on the block who know for shooting. Exactly. Why are you bringing your gun out right Exactly. <laughs> what the fuck is you doing? Exactly, man. Listen, uh, first of all, I, I only want to read this whole verse. No, nah, go ahead, please. Do. I only want to read this well, whole nah, verse. I want to break through it. Because I want to get to the direct shit. Motherfuck the big three. Nigga, it's just big me. Nigga, bum, ain't, you got to hear with the shit. Nigga, bum. And your best work is a light pack. It's light. Ain't y'all to say that shit up top? That it's shit was like, light, man. And that's like the New York, the battle rapper niggas. Yeah. And that's light. <laughs> that's light. Ah, ah, ah. His shit oh, is that like shit. That's what it is, dog. <laughs> Nigga, Prince outlive Mike Jack. For all your dogs getting buried, that's a cave with all these nines he gonna see Pit Cemetery. Oh, my God. This nigga is a battle rapper. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a that's battle rapper. That, 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 that shit is. is fire. These that's niggas is not rapping like that. Cole don't even rap like that. He don't. Cole is more of a, it's a great sentence, this nigga telling stories and shit, he have a couple metaphors, Cole is a great rapper, he don't rap direct about nothing to nobody like that, am I lying? He doesn't have to. That's my point, but he tried to call Kanye out in that bullshit on that false prophet's weak ass song, I fuck with Cole, this ain't, you know what I'm saying, this Yo, every time we come, saying, to, every time we come to Kendrick, you want this Cole? <laughs> you know what Drake do when he try to get direct? He but, sing? Bunch of empty threats. Yeah, oh. Yo, he, yeah, yo, he, he do a lot of empty threats. He, he be, a bunch of empty threats, man. Get your shirt with a nigga and up on the gilded, nigga. <laughs> That's what you tell him. You tell All him I'm saying is, the, just put it like this, man. It's only one of these niggas I know when a, they can drop this. No, no, he got he got the Andre three thousand effect, and it's crazy that he shouted him out in that verse. Remember when Andre used to be dropping a verse, and that's all that fucking mattered for the next week in hip hop. Is the verse Andre 3000? Well, no, no, no. Well, hold on, hold on. Is the verse Andre 3000? We were in a different time when Andre dropped it. You still be mad for like at least a month and a half. That's a fact. You know, Fucking remit, walk it out, remit, throw some D's, remix. Yeah, Come on, bro. International players. International and, players. And um, matter of fact, that shit's still on this. That shit's still get played. The, the shit he just did with Kanye, the shit he did with Killer Mike, got the nigga sweeping the Grammys. We talking about a, I mean, a nigga. The, it's got, only got, two got, rappers that had that effect. Hov do that every now and then. Mm-hmm. Lil Wayne used to do it. Right now, it's Andre 3000 and it's Kendrick Lamar. Ain't nobody else. 
The next closest is cold, but that shit don't last that long. That shit lasts for like a day and a half. No, no, it lasts about a, about a about week. About four days. Yeah. Yeah, yeah four days. Because, yeah, yeah. I mean, honestly, yeah, four days. I, I get that. Because, you know, that kitchen yeah. shit lasts all seven days. I'm telling you. <laughs> that shit was a seven day. Telling you. When the heart part five dropped. Oh, that shit lasted a good seven, eight days, honestly. Come on, bro. I'm just saying. But go ahead, man. This nigga's him, bro. He's yeah. the best. Don't tell me about J. Cole and his, his feature, right? He been cooking, niggas. But he ain't got direct with nothing. Fuck about that. I'm out of this shit, man. This, but this might be a time they they get that right. I will say that I like this. Okay. I like this for a few for a few reasons. You go back, you know, Drake has been said to throw a bunch of subliminals towards Kendrick Way, towards whoever way. He's subliminal king at this point. So cool. I like what I like what Cole did because, like you said, he don't he don't really mention anything when it comes to that. Actually, I mean. To be honest, this is the first time on first first shooting me hearing anything about saying the big three type shit. He kind of let that shit go and keep it moving. Correct. So I like that. And I mean, of course, not knowing that Kendrick was going to have a verse anywhere, not knowing what Kendrick was doing music wise, to hear this is great. But if you know Kendrick was coming, <laughs> you know that was going to be a response. Kendrick, is, Kendrick doesn't take anything shot his way lightly, ever. So, but I think it's good for music. I mean, now I don't know what. I think that Cole may respond. He is he is in his album mode, making an album right now. So he might be like, "All right, cool. I got a little song that I could throw out." Drake, on the other hand, look, Drake. If you ain't gonna hop on, if you ain't got a time stamp <laughs> on when this, it's over for that time yeah, stamp. Too. But no, I'm saying if you ain't got a time stamp when you drop something towards Kendrick. You better try another back to back song. Make something catchy that niggas to sing along to. That's all you can do. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, no, this this is a verse. This is a verse. It's gonna be it's gonna be talked about. It's gonna be played. But I don't know because of the state of music right now, how long this is gonna last. I mean, that's the thing. That's what I've said. It's it's two it's only two people out that have had the ability to outdo. The state of music. That's Andre 3000 when he drops the verse next Kendrick Lamar. It's the only two that actually got some staying power. You throw in a couple Kanye moments, you know what I'm saying? But outside of that, I agree. Yeah, it ain't really, it ain't really nothing else. Cause Drake don't, gotta Drake some, don't do that it, no more. It got to be some type of controversy associated that's gonna make the music last longer. It's a, a Andre verse, it's a Kendrick verse, or it's a Kanye album. That's really all we got right now. Yeah. So agree, agree. And like you said, controversy has to be it because you think about this, think about the uh, it's happening that gunner popped the gunner up. Thing, right? Controversy. Exactly. You know, so I mean, because even Twenty One album was highly anticipated. And Came and went. Four days. No, no real hits off of it. No nothing. Yeah. Red Room. I don't know if I'm considering that. A hit as like we know Twenty One Savage hits beat, but very much so. I mean, a lot. I mean, crazy, that, that shit should is saying murder backwards. It is. So I mean, that's cool. Um, but yeah, man, shout out to Kendrick. Thank you for coming out with some music. You know, niggas was talking about you coming out with something else after Mr. Morales. So, Mr. Morales is fire. It's cool. It's solid. You think you, um, you like that better than the Cole album? Yeah, absolutely. You know, you biased. Cole don't drop great bodies of work. That was that was a really good album, actually. I said great. That was great. You think the off season was a great album? Yeah, actually it was. Okay. Now let me know where you stand as far as we we rating music. Yeah. Okay. We we rate that album on scale one to ten. Which one? The oh uh, what's it called? The off season. I don't even remember the album. What the, I'm saying, give me give me the best song on the album. On top of your head. I mean, my favorite song is Ninety Five South. Give it the best song. To me, that's that is for me. First, what's the biggest song? What was the biggest hit? Oh, I don't know. Okay, that's the hit. Nothing. So, he's four so driving a classic album. It's not. He got classic songs on there though. Yeah, that's a classic. How, why is it not a classic album? You're comparing that to, you comparing that to to what? The classic album of this era, or are you can comparing that to all time? Because classic all time, that's just not in the conversation. Good Kid, Man City is a classic of all time. Absolutely. They said his big, uh, his first three albums is arguably one of the best three album runs in hip hop history. You forgot? 
They said yeah. him, Outkast. Uh -huh. so I'm just go, telling you no, what no, they no, said. I'm trying to think about his first three albums. Good Kid, Mad City. No, 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 no. Section 80. Section 80. Yeah. That was or, a mistake turned out. I mean, really, I mean, true. Look, but do the other three then. Do Good Kid, Mad City to Pimp a Butterfly. Butterfly. Damn. They said that's arguably. Oh, yeah, not nah, get damn fuck. I mean, get um, to Pimp a Butterfly out of here. Yeah. Clay claim that won, a, won several awards. So, I mean, if you want to look at it like that. That's like niggas when niggas be saying get four four the fuck out of here. They had impact. I, I said get that shit the fuck out of here. I, I agree with and you I'm, too. I'm, I'm just I saying. Bought that, I'm, I bought that I'm shit. Saying I it also got a mega hit on there too on uh to Ben Butterfly. So we gotta consider that. Which one? We gonna be alright. It's a huge yeah, song. It is. It's a mega song. So it is. All right. Black and Berry was doing this number four minutes. That's a fact. That's what I'm saying. So, but that's it. Just cause you got you got a big you got. That's the same shit I said about uh, 2014 for Hills Drop. But that's different. It's like a hater. Hey, yo, man, let's, let's talk about um the Beehive, your peoples. What's up with the Beehive, man? Beyonce, Mrs. Carter, has announced that her album will be dropping on March 29th. She also... Cowboy Carter. Cowboy Carter. She also made a post on... Yes, yes she did. Right got it up. It's rather lengthy. It is. A lot of words. Ooh. All right, I'm going to go ahead and let y'all know. So she did this back on three days ago. So you can get, you know, aspect of time. <clears throat> Ms. Carter says, Today marks the 10-day countdown until the release of Act 2. Thank you from the bottom of my heart to all the supporters of Texas Hold'em and 16 Carriages. I feel honored to be the first black woman with the number one single on a hot country songs chart. That would not have happened without the outpouring of support from each and every one of you. My hope is that years from now, the mention of an artist's race as it relates to releasing genres of music will be irrelevant. You know, they was they wasn't trying to put her on in the country for those two songs. They were saying those country songs. I mean, go ahead. That's you, you know, I don't know. I mean, she just said she was the first black woman, but then she said, "I hopefully they don't mention race no more." But yeah. It's a little, it's a little conflicting. Mm -hmm. But you know, no, she's saying that the fact that she was the first black one should shouldn't have even been a problem. So, eh? so it shouldn't matter. It shouldn't matter. But she's saying that you know now it matters right now because they ain't letting us in. No, I mean I don't fucking know what that was she said. <clears throat> this album has been over five years in the making. It was born out of an experience that I had years ago where I did not feel welcome, and mm. it is very clear that I wasn't. But because of that experience, I did a deeper dive into the history of country music and studied our rich musical archive. Maybe she, maybe, I mean, she went to say it's Richard, but okay. It feels good to see how music can unite so many people around the world while also amplifying the voices of some of the people who have dedicated so much of their lives educating on our musical history. The criticisms I faced when I first entered the genre forced me to propel past the limitations that were put on me. Act two is a result of challenging myself and taking my time to bend and blend genres together to create this body of work. I have a few surprises on the album and have collaborated with some brilliant artists who I deeply respect. I hope that you can hear my heart and soul and all of the love and passion that I poured into every detail and every sound. I focus on this album as a continuation of Renaissance. I hope this album is an experience, create another journey where you can close your eyes, start from the beginning and never stop. This ain't a country album. This is a Beyonce album. This is Act 2, Cowboy Carter. I am proud to share with all of y'all. It's a lot. It was. It's a lot. She said a lot of things in there. She said a whole lot of shit. So what do you take away from it? She said this is not a country album. This is a Beyonce album. So. Which is interesting. It is. Um, I take a few things away from it. The first two songs. I don't. I'm not a country person. I don't listen to country like that. So I can't tell you where in sounds of like sound and aesthetic if it's country or not. To me, it sounds country from what I know, but I, you know, from what the few country songs that I've heard, I see there's a huge change in the sound of country. It's not just your typical, you know, like a banjo in the background or something. It's not that typical sound. You know, you hear 808s in country music now, things like right. that. So um, I see what she was saying. You know, she's like, hey. I'm the first black woman. I am proud of that. But, you know, hope, hopefully... And what I'm thinking she's saying that, you know, my race played a big part in country music. I mean, in them not, you know, 
me being the first one or that her feeling like, hey, we it's not a lot of us in it. Hopefully that race does not play, you know, in the future, play a card in the future. So I get that. Okay. Um, towards the end when she said this is not a country album, this is a Beyonce album. Then to me, you don't mention country at all. Because <laughs> we know what a Beyonce album is. It's not it's not 16 horses. I mean, 16 carriages in Texas Hold'em. So I don't know where you're going for that. I don't know who wrote it or who didn't write it or who didn't proofread yeah. the shit. So, um, yeah, that doesn't make sense to me. It's kind of a contradiction. Um, that's what I took out of it. Um, you know, hopefully, you know, if, if it's a Beyonce album, we hear I would like to hear more of the Beyonce side, the R&B-ish side. Yeah. Um, I listened to Act One. It wasn't my thing. It wasn't for me. So, uh, you know, I guess we're going to see. If it's not a country album, then, all right? Yeah. I mean, I, I agree. I think it's a lot to uh, to take away. Number one, that that is that doesn't make sense um, for you to say, I was inspired to do this because at the country wars and and then you're saying it's not a country album so it's a Beyonce album so if that's the case then why make a big deal about the country genre and being the first black woman on the country that don't make a lot of sense but cool yeah. cool I think she I, what I took from that from what I would interpret is that based off the first two songs which maybe she's saying People are going to take this as a country and it's meant to be inspired by country music, but mm. I'm still going to sound like I sound. My sound is my sound, the way I sing, yeah. my runs, so I'm going to be blending the music. Okay. So I think it's, I, that's what I think she's saying. Yeah, because I mean, she did say yeah. she's going to do a lot of blending, you know. So I think it's very Kanye-esque in the fact, like, you, he did drop a full-fledged gospel album, but he also called Donda a gospel album. And I think a lot of people would... A lot of pushback on this. It's down to that really gospel. gospel. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. So I can see her. I, I feel like a lot of this is just a lot of Kanye. That, I, it's very similar in the way that she did this because they she didn't like the way she was treated. Yeah, some Kanye shit. That's some Kanye shit. So you took it to the limit, and now you pressing the issue to make a point, just mm -hmm. to make a point. Mm -hmm. Goddamn. So I like that. I do like that she did that. But I also think. It's, it's it's like um, the same criticism Kanye got when it was like, bro, just because you you got these folks singing and you using the word God instead of the word, you know what I'm saying, something else, does that really make it gospel? gospel. Yeah. Because with agree. this, you, you're just throwing on a cowboy hat and riding a horse. Riding a horse, yeah. And you got a, a guitar playing. Is that really country? Or are you just, you know what I'm saying? And, like, and if you, like you said, if you yeah. heard Beyonce talk, she's just country. She is exactly so. So I mean, your your sound and your twang and your voice is gonna sound like that, right? Um, so I think that's I don't know I don't know what to take away from that. I think I like that she has the power and people gonna support her regardless, just like Kanye. But a lot of this is some nut shit, some silly shit. It is some goofball shit. You can make whatever type of music you can make without it being tied to some type of mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying a movement to make a point when it's really just about you didn't you, didn't, you got your feelings hurt. You did. And you want to make prove a point. That's cool. That's cool. Now, in the long run, if it has beneficial effects, mm -hmm. you know what I'm then saying? Cool. Then cool. Because a lot of shit, they say uh, LeBron affected the way the league worked because he decided to take matters into his own hands. hands. Just tell the truth. I did that shit because I wanted to get up out of there. And I wanted <laughs> to win my ring. <laughs> what came after that might have not been my intention, but it was an after effect. You know what I'm saying? But let's not politicize everything and make it a bigger deal. Then what it really you know what is. I'm saying? If you want to take country uh, inspiration, you're Beyonce. You can sing whatever the fuck you, you If you want to cover Dolly Parton. Yeah, you really can. And, and throw K. Michelle or whatever black country music artist you know. And it sounds good. We're going to rock with it. We are. You don't need to sell I mean, us Beyonce, country. You know what I'm saying? Your yeah. going to buy your shit regardless. Yeah, you're Beyonce. You, so, you're one of the most talented, in my opinion. The closest probably to Michael Jackson we've seen in, yeah. in music history. You know what I'm saying? When it comes to... The performance, mm -hmm. the the vocal abilities, mm -hmm. the the consistent uh, quality, you are that. So you don't got to sell us this this movement or whatever for us to support you. But I get it though. Your brand, you with Jay Z. All y'all do is politicize every fucking thing. We get it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know how uh, Jay Z love making some shit about something bigger than what it is. Though. Nigga, you want to see Snoop Dogg perform? Stop it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But um, and 
the album cover, which was a, a straight up nude shoot with braids covering, I thought that was, uh, I thought that was a bit much for Beyonce. This, but uh, yeah, Beyonce. There'll be different things. You saw Eric Kabadu? I did. I saw Eric Kabadu. <laughs> Eric Kabadu gonna tweet Jay, talk about, you know, Jay do something about this. He just gonna let her do me like this. Yeah. Yeah, I saw that. She didn't like, um... Beyonce, you know, in that picture, Beyonce had the, the braids with the, the the things. Beads on them. Beads on them, at the, you know, on them as a bang, how Eric Kabadu used to do. And... And she is wearing a uh, sash that says Act Two, and it has I think that's I don't know if it's weed or I don't know what it is. She's holding a pipe or some shit, cigar. Mm. Um, yeah, this is interesting for. Uh, I mean, I think this may be her being leaning into like, nah, this really ain't a country album for real. Like, I'm really just taking country inspiration. Inspiration, which I mean, in a post she did say that's that's what her. Yeah. She's trying to blend things, so. It literally said, you know, I'm going to take this and to bend and blend genres together. Right. So, I mean, that could be that could be that. So, if that's the case, cool. But again, like you said, like I both said, it doesn't make sense to harp on you getting into country. If anything, I'd have been like, yo, I appreciate, you know what I'm saying, me taking this song and y'all putting it for country. Right, yeah. you know, we're breaking down walls now that you see that we can like, kind of, you know, dip and dab out of different genres. Right, yeah. But you know, making such a big thing and then say, "Hey, this is not a country album." Yeah, I, I, I don't the know. Fuck do you want to do it? Right. <laughs> the fuck is this? I don't know what her end game was with that, but I will say she's done a great job at selling the fuck this, out of this, this, this product. So I mean, um, starting with the Verizon commercial. This probably is the most excited I've been for a Beyonce album in a while, just because I'm just so curious to see what exactly she has she meant. Cause she usually don't do these long ass posts like that at all, and that's a very risque cover, uh, album cover, especially um, at this stage in her career. But I mean, but I don't know if that's the album cover because you you seen the oh, not the album cover. No, because remember prior to that when she announced Cowboy Carter, this was it. This is where her post is on. So I mean, if that if that is it, if this is the album covered in cool, I'm not mad at it. I mean, I could be wrong, yeah, but yeah, we've seen a few different uh, photos of her, so yeah. So I'm not, I'm not mad at it if it is. All right, cool. I want I put posted up with that. <laughs> yo, niggas, yo, do y'all put up posters in your room anymore on your house? Get them framed. That would be hard. That is a hard photo though. It is. Get it framed. That'd be kind of tough. Yeah. I mean, she she got the vinyl, she got the bundle package coming, so yeah, I'm sure it'll be included in there. I might have to, I might have to buy that joint. Yeah, somebody gotta tell me if they got like a big picture of it. Yeah. Free shit, but you know. <laughs> I, I just think that shit is hilarious. That oh man, that's like a nigga. That's like future saying he want to do country. All of a sudden, he wearing cowboy boots and hats and riding horses all the fuck everywhere. Tell Tommy, saying that shit is hilarious. Man. And then he if he fucking yeah. like, nah, this is a future album, though. right? <laughs> <laughs> It's a future Metro album though, dude, but it's got a little country inspiration. She at the was the Grammys and the Cowboys. That shit is funny, but it is. She's 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 really going full fledged yeah, with did. that with the cowboy shit to say it's not a cowboy. I mean a country album. Right, right. Um, cowboy Carter is a little lazy of a name too, but Cowboy Carter. Yeah. You know, I mean, yeah, it is. <laughs> I, I, I'm trying. I was trying. I was trying. <laughs> Yeah, it is. It's it like, is. But I like how direct it is at the same time. Make it clear that, yeah. But cool, man. We just, let's move on. Told me, bro. We got um, we got a couple new podcasts that just dropped. LeBron and JJ Reddit just dropped. Mm-hmm. Mind the game. First episode by the hour. JJ Reddit been doing this podcast thing for a few years, and he got so good at it they hired him at ESPN. Yeah. Um, recently retired too so he ain't been out the league that long been- Beyonce is, I mean Beyonce fuck See, JJ Reddy got a great basketball mom he does he does but he also wasn't that great of a player but he also is a very great wordsmith and he speaks very well so he does um, he's a very solid player though he got he got paid I mean that's because the market and the, the situation he was in but he did um, JJ Reddit, yeah, I like his style of uh of um I just think um 
A lot of people take issue with JJ. They do. A little snarky, you know what I'm saying? A little, they do. know it all this. You know what I mean? And uh, you pair that up with LeBron, I think you got for some interesting takes. You do. It's going to be some shit LeBron said that JJ just going to agree with just because it's LeBron. That's that's my that's my take. That is my take. Because I actually, and I, you know what? That's funny that you said it because I was thinking about that. JJ doesn't always agree with everyone. That's a fact, JJ. And he, and he, and he, 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 he stay, like, he's like, like he do, he do, and he stand on his he shit, do. too. But Coming at Kendrick Ferguson, like, yeah, you know, man, is, yeah. I played in this office for 15 years, nigga. You was in the paint getting three-second violations. <laughs> Don't tell me about the fucking pick and roll. So, yeah. I, but I am, I would like to see a very objective JJ Reddick with LeBron. I agree. I would like to see that because there's a lot of shit that even people be like, LeBron, what the hell are you talking about? Right. Le- LeBron is has that type of power. He's going to have people just agree with him just because. Yeah. He'll be on the shop saying some bull. Saying some bullshit. Like that one time he was on with the soccer player talking about, no, no, that's my favorite saying. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, the fuck it wasn't. <laughs> so, I mean, yeah, I would like to see a very objective J.J. Reddick with LeBron, but it's going to be tough because it's on LeBron's platform. They, they well, share, they, 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 they share, share it, but it's, it's, LeBron is also, JJ, you ain't got enough money to talk to LeBron right now. <laughs> so it's going to be a little tough. Uh, so he did I mean, have one controversial take. He said, um, since he's been covering the game last 20 years or so, uh, maybe 30 years or so, he says Steph and Allen Iverson have been the two most influential NBA players in that time. Um, I don't, I don't necessarily, I, it's like 50, 50. I don't disagree. Cause you think about LeBron, LeBron, what got drafted in 2003? Yes. At 18. Yeah. In 90, what was it? 96 that eight I got drafted? Yep. Him and Kobe. Was it yeah. Kobe? Yeah. yeah. I think it was, yeah, 96. And so that was seven years earlier. LeBron, what if he, so he was 11 years old. Yes, and y'all did change. And y'all changed the dress code. Yeah. And y'all changed what NBA looked like. Yes. And y'all came in with the cornrows. And y'all came with every tattoo, the big chains, Facts. the clothes, the tattoos, hanging out with rappers, rapping. And now so translated to the way he played the game. Very street ball. Very, very street ball. One, His know, crossover, crossover changed. Yeah. You know, you look at it, we talking about everybody. I don't believe he does because it's real basic now if you look at it. But talking about some like when people talk about the best handles in, ever. And y'all comes up in that conversation. I mean, you don't think he got some of the best handles ever? Yeah, but I mean, yo, his handles is like that one, little simple one two. I mean, the nigga shit worked. It did. It did. It But yeah, so I mean, but if you just look at that, that he changed the game. Then you look at Steph Curry. There's a reason why you got to guard a nigga ninety four feet. It's a fact. There's a reason why niggas is shooting 70, 80 plus three pointers. Yeah. And not going to the hoop. There's a reason why you put up 200 points in an all-star game. Because yeah. everybody in the world is shooting a three. You think, look at these kids. The only thing they can do is dunk and shoot threes from half court. I agree. I, I, I mean, I think it's hard to argue that uh, just looking at the game today, everybody wanting to be the, this, that, the style, fashion icon, mm-hmm. and also isolate everybody with the crazy handles and shooting from distance. Mm-hmm. That's literally a combination of Allen Iverson and Steph Curry. So, Literally. like, that's what the NBA became. I mean, and you got. I mean, you could you can throw um, James Harden in that too. He can. He, he did isolation. Change. Isolation game one on one with him. Listen, just, he changed that shit up. He got. He might be the one up. for the yes. isolation. He yeah. He got the game looking crazy. Yeah. Because he was isoing and dropping sixty and winning and going to the Western Conference Finals. Yeah. And everybody thought by doing it one on one. Everybody thought if I can just get a step back in a, in a crossover, I'll be fine. I can be the best player in the league. Mm-hmm. So, I mean... Because yeah, he was looking like that. <laughs> you could throw some other names in there, but I do agree as far as like what the game looks like right now, what it has looked like for the last few years. I think those two are definitely the two biggest influencing factors. I mean, LeBron about. has been a big influence in just taking, say, yeah. taking your career in your own hands and really doing like showing them his different way to play the game. I was going to say that, but also like the fact that the, the the league is 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 um, positionless. Yeah, you got to You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. You could throw Lamar on a lot of guys, but LeBron is the is the face of the uh, positionless basketball. To where put him anywhere on the court, 
we just need some guys that are versatile. Yep. That's where you got niggas like Andre Iguodala being super important. Yep. Draymond Green being super, super important. important. Yeah. So he did. I mean, you think about this, right? You think about it, 2003 when he came to league, you know, with DeMello, the D Wade, mm-hmm. Chris Bosch. Everybody was put in a position. You played your fucking position. D Wade was still looked at. He was either point guard, shooting guard. He was that right there. Facts. Yeah. LeBron and Melo were both small forwards. They looked at that when you did the All Star game. It was two guards. Mm-hmm. It was a small forward, then a power forward, and, and a center. Still have real big man. KG's, still, them, Tim Dunks, and all that. Yeah. Yeah. So forwards, yeah. you look at LeBron. He decided. He said, "Nah, I'm gonna change that up. I'm the point guard of this team." Facts. Yeah. I'm going to bring the ball down at 6'8", 6'9", 280 pounds. Yep. So, yeah. So, I mean, if you if you really – but it, I can understand. I know people talking about uh, – what's it called? It? AI and Curry talking about with Jordan. Jordan changed it for a period of time. Yes, we are still wearing Jordans. I get that. Cool. The fashion thing to an extent. But – you look at the, the way the game is played, honestly, a lot more people was looking at the Kobe mentality than Jordan. Yeah. You know, everybody in the league right now is talking about the, the mama mentality. Yeah. I mean, I agree. I think uh, uh, Kobe, I mean, Jordan changed it from like a, a wider perspective in the sense that it became more about the player. The player, much so. But as far as the style of play, mm-hmm. when it comes to nobody plays like Kobe or Jordan. No. That style never was, you know what I'm saying, mm-hmm. that shit. It was just them two. It's a couple, like, fake, um, what's it, Gerald Wallace, not Gerald Wallace, uh, there's a few, uh, fake-ass, like, Kobe Bryant's that tried to come across, you know what I'm saying, doing a couple post-ups here and there. That shit ain't work, man. <laughs> that shit ain't work. Them guys was never like that, you know what I'm saying, a bunch of, uh, Ruby Gays and shit like that. Yeah. Trying to post up his, you, you ain't got no fade away like that, dog. But <laughs> shout out to Brandon Roy though. He, he no Brandon Roy. Yeah, he was hurt. Damn, yeah. you know what I'm saying. And Brandon Roy didn't get hurt. Damn, there was that boy. But uh, yeah, niggas don't if play anything, like that. Penny Hardaway was another one to me. Penny Hardaway was in for you, right? That's yeah, a fact. Penny you, Hardaway was very Penny unfortunate. Penny Hardaway was huge. Shit, Tim know? Hardaway. Tim Hardaway. He was the one with the crossover, and I think AI took it another step forward. If you want to talk about big guards, you know, you go to Magic Johnson, and Penny Hardaway was looked at right after. Yeah. And so I can. Le- what LeBron said to me is, he he said it on the money. You literally look at the game and what the what every you look at everybody in the game right now. You have a bunch of tattoos, braids, three point shooting. That's a fact. And to be fair, you know, yeah, I don't fuck, you know I don't fuck with the boy either, but I gotta throw Russ Russ Russell Webb's Westbrook in there. In terms of triple double, yeah, but first, that's yeah. that hunting. Stat hunting, not playing defense. You know what I'm saying? Rushing to the rushing to the rim to go grab a rebound. Triple doubles come by a lot easier these days. They are not, but nobody's playing defense either. That's that's my point. He was he was playing defense. That nigga was out of position more than anybody I've ever seen. Yeah, he he was doing everything for his team. <laughs> doing everything for that OKC team, man. Dragging the motherfuckers. I mean, I've seen people do everything for that team. It didn't look like that. That's all I'm saying. James Harden was doing everything for the team. Didn't look like that. Nah, but what, he wasn't waiting for no rebounds. Nah, that shit came just fell in his hands. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so I mean, I, I don't see what the I don't see what the controversy is on that one. I mean, you can literally look at the game top to bottom and see. You can see it. Yeah, and I think I think it's gonna uh, switch eventually. Though I definitely think um, that Curry era is coming to an end. I think the super long range. Threes are coming to an end. I honestly, I honestly do believe I, that. No, no, I hope it comes. I think to uh, Wimby uh, is going to be a big part of that, and I think Shea Gildress is going to be a big part of that too. One player that's literally all over going to be dominating the game, but's not shooting a bunch of threes, and he's not shooting from super far. Tall, you know, what I'm saying adjusting everybody's shot, and yeah. I also think Shea Gildress because his game is a lot of step backs, pushing off and finishing at the rim. He shoot threes, but that's not really his go to yeah. game. But I mean, and you're talking about influential. If you just look at the, you know, I look at the category of like the the small forwards of what that the what LeBron, Melo, T Mac, KDs, those people were of just uh, the isolation game. The isolation mid range elbow. Yeah. Yeah. So those are plays. So I mean, like again, you know, guys, 
LeBron is, if you know anything about LeBron, I know he said a bunch of watching. LeBron is smart. Yeah. And he studied the game and he's he's mastered what basketball is. If anybody has the right to say something, then I think he does. Facts, yeah. So, I know we was watching earlier, KG and them has a, they always want to go back to what Jordan did. But, again. Everybody didn't, didn't grow up watching Jordan, these young kids. These young kids don't know shit about Jordan at this point. They know his sneakers. And that's it. You barely know that. Good or bad thing, but she even George going out of style a little bit. Let's keep it on. As I said, even even with that. So you know what I'm saying that's all we got. Right? Unless you got you got something else? No. Oh, the baby dropped a song recently. All right, that's all we got, y'all. So gonna catch y'all next time, man. Like, follow, subscribe, share. You know what I'm saying comment all the above. Free thug, free Casanova.